After planar tracking and power mesh tracking, Mocha Pro 2024 introduced a new feature, 3D camera tracking. Now you can use Mocha Pro to 3D track your footage similar to 3D camera tracking in After Effects. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you in detail how to use Mocha Pro's 3D camera solver to create a camera fly through text animation in After Effects. We have a drone footage on the timeline and we are gonna track this footage to add text then zoom in through the text to create an eye-catching text intro animation. First let's go to effects and presets tab to find Mocha Pro plugin. Mocha Pro is a powerful ad winning software developed by Boris FX. You can purchase Mocha Pro at 50% off using the special link I have included in the description of this video. Once you have the plugin, drag it to the timeline and apply it to the footage you wanna track. With the footage selected, go to Effect Controls tab where you find the Mocker Pro that we have just applied. Before diving into Mocker Pro, make sure the resolution is set to full because tracking at reduced resolution can be faster but less accurate. Next, click on Mocker to open the Mocker Pro interface. Now we are inside Mocker Pro and you can see the footage here. Go to Workspace at the top bar and select Camera Solve for its new 3D objects panel. In my previous tutorials, we used the classic workspace for planar tracking, power mesh tracking, and other tasks. If you are interested, you can watch those tutorials to learn more about Mocha. I have included the links in the description below. Here you can see tabs for tracking and stabilization, but this time we will select the camera solve tab for 3D camera tracking. Once you have selected the camera solve workspace, you instantly see the 3D objects tab on the right hand side which contains a list of all objects in the swap shot. Just below you find 3D object properties which allow you to control 3D features and their position in space. By default, every feature has a rotation of 0 and a scale of 1. The camera column covers the main solving button and the details of the physical camera. By clicking the solve button, Mocha will begin finding points of interest to track the footage based on either the default settings or the settings you have chosen in the parameters. Solving again will clear the previous solve. One of the first parameters just below the solve button is the focal length. In camera solve settings, focal length refers to distance from the lens to the sensor when the subject is in focus. Shorter focal lengths like 14mm to 35mm provide a wider view while longer focal length like 70mm to 300mm offer a narrow view. By default, unknown is selected, allowing Mocha Pro to estimate the focal length from the track data and scene details. This works well for sample scenes or when you don't have the exact camera specs. If you know the exact camera length, entering it makes tracking more accurate, especially for complex scenes. For your situation, leaving it as unknown should be perfectly fine. 3D motion defines the type of motion in the scene, with most options based on synthesized equivalent. The next parameter under 3D motion is zoom lens. In Mocha Pro, you can input lens details to assist with tracking. If you are using a zoom lens and zooming during the shot, make sure to enable the zoom lens setting. This helps Mocha Pro to manage change in focal length. If you are not zooming, you don't need to enable this setting. I'm not gonna enable these settings for this moving forward drone footage because the focal length is not changing during the shot. On tripod is a simple setting, enable this option if the camera is mounted on a stationary tripod. Next we have another setting in 3D motion called corners. Enable these options if there are structural corners in the scene, such as buildings, windows or bricks. Now let's move on to the features column which defines the auto features to track alongside any tracks you have made with the layers. It includes settings that you can adjust to improve tracking accuracy. Enabling use auto features tells Mocha to use additional tracking features in the shot. If this is off, it will only use planar tracks and power mesh tracks. Minimum trackers per frame sets the minimum number of feature points that must be tracked per frame for a camera solve to work. More trackers improve the quality and stability to achieve an accurate camera solve, especially in challenging tracking scenarios. By default, minimum trackers per frame is set to 12. Maximum tracker count specifies the maximum number of feature points or trackers used in each frame for the camera solve. By default, is often 120. Increasing this value can improve tracking accuracy within that frame, but also increases processing time, as more trackers require more competition. A small blip size defines the smallest size of features in pixels that Mocha Pro will track. A smaller values allow for tracking finer details which can improve accuracy in high resolution footage or when tracking small objects. For starting values like 5 to 10 pixels are commonly used. 
Big Bleep size specifies the larger size of the features in pixels that Mocha Pro will track. Larger values are useful for tracking bigger features which can be beneficial in low resolution footage or when dealing with the larger objects. The optimal settings for both small blip size and big blip size depend on your specific footage. It's often best to start with the small values and adjust as needed based on the tracking results to improve accuracy. Now let's click on the solve button to run an automatic solver that finds points of interest to track the footage. You can instantly see solving process in the top right corner. Once the solve is finished, the 3D view will appear, showing the features along with a ground plane grid as viewed through the solve camera. If I move the time indicator, you can observe how all of these tracking points follow the video. You may notice that some of these points don't interact with the tree because they are not sticking to the tree. They are actually forming objects in the background like mountains, the ground, and other elements. This is a bit complex footage in terms of tracking. I need more tracking points on the tree to find the best one for text animation. So let's click on the clear solve button to clear the solved data. Next, we need to increase the maximum tracker count to around 350 or 400. Then click on the solve button again to initiate the solving process. Once it's done, you'll see a lot of tracking points on the video than in the previous solve. One important aspect of the camera solving that I need to share with you is the average error. Ideally, you should aim for an average error below 1 pixel. An error of 1 or 2 pixels is not bad but uh, 0.9 or below is excellent. And you can improve it by adjusting the parameters. Now if I move the time indicator, you see two different kinds of points. Some stick to the background objects not tracking the tree in the timeline area where the tree is in the frame. Let's move the time indicator until the tree grows out of the frame to easily identify these features. Then click and drag to select some trackers here. Next go to 3D objects tabs on the right hand side which contains a list of all objects in the solved shoot. In the list of vertices which are basically the tracking points, you see that some of the highlighted because we just selected them on the preview monitor. Now click on the color icon box and change color from green to yellow or something you like then hit ok. After that click on the video to see the change color of the points. We made these changes to separate the tracking points of the tree from the other points. You can see that it's now easier to find the tracking points on the tree. We can select some of the base points here to export into After Effects for text tracking which will help us to get the camera fly through the text animation. Once you have solved the shoot, you can make adjustments using Align to Ground and Make Origin. To set ground plane, start by clicking and dragging to select trackers that are located on a flat surface in your footage. This surface will be treated as the ground plane. Next, hold on the shift key and click and drag to select additional trackers. When you have selected 3 or more features, the align to ground button will become active. Now click this button to rotate the entire scene so that the selected points align with the ground plane. You should see a change in the scene's alignment. This sample footage may not fully show these adjustments so I plan to create another video in the future to better explain the align to ground and make origin process. After using Align to Ground, the next step is used to make origin. This feature centers the entire scene including the camera around the selected point, positioning it at the origin in 3D space. Choosing a suitable point in your footage, active the make origin option and then click the button. This process establishes a reference point for 3D space, allowing for precise control over the measurements and movements, which helps stabilize and accurately align 3D elements with your track footage. Now hold on the Alt key then left click and drag it to rotate the view and see the 3D perspective. You can move around the scene and export it in 3D. Use the scroll wheel to dolly the view in and out. You'll notice that the camera is also tracked within the 3D space. To move the scene around, hold on the Alt key and left click again to take a quick look at the scene from different perspectives in the 3D view of your 2D scene. To return to the normal view, simply long place on 3D and click on camera. Next, go to the 3D Objects panel and at the top select the Skin Transform. This object is the parent of entire scene and manipulating it will transform all features and the camera. This is very useful for quickly adjusting the position, rotation and scale of the scene without affecting the solved camera. To do this first, go to the 3D Objects Properties panel beneath 3D Objects and adjust the rotation. Rotation controls the object's orientation around its X, Y and Z axis. Left click and hold down the X value, then drag the mouse left or right to change its value and adjust the X rotation. Similarly, you can adjust the position, rotation and scale to manipulate the scene transform or any selected feature. 
Now let's move the time indicator to find a few points that we will export to After Effects for the text tracking or animation. Once you have identified the points, select them by holding down the shift key and left clicking. These tracking points that stick to the tree are moving as the tree goes out of the frame in this forward moving drone footage, which is important for creating the camera fly through text animation intro. Finally, it's time to export the camera tracking data. To do this, click on export camera data and a dialog box will pop up. First, select the format for After Effects by choosing After Effects 3D motion data. Next, you will see three export options, all subjects, all visible and selected. Since we have selected a few features, choosing the selected option to export only these features. After that, click on copy to clipboard, then hit OK. Now click on the save button to save the project and then go to file and exit Mockup Pro to return to After Effects. Now we are inside After Effects and you might notice that nothing appears on the timeline such as the Mocha camera and null objects because we have not imported the camera data yet. To import the 3D camera data go to edit in the top bar then scroll down and click on paste Mocha camera. If you can't see this option it may be because the Mocha 3D track importer plugin is not installed. To install this plugin you can watch this video linked in the description. However if you are using Mocha Pro 2024.5 or a later version you don't need to install a separate importer plugin as it is now included with the updated version of Mocha Pro. After clicking paste Mocha camera, you should see the Mocha 3D camera and other three features we selected. At the bottom of all layers, you find the video. If you select a feature or null object individually, you can see the 3D tracking points on the video associated with that feature. Now deselect all layers on the timeline by clicking on a blank area. Next, let's add text, select the type tool and type something like Europe or whatever you prefer. After typing, switch back to the selection tool and when you play the time indicator, you'll notice that text is not moving, it's not following any tracking points. To fix this, first ensure that the time indicator is at the beginning frame, then enable 3D icon or the cube icon for the text layer to allow it to be manipulated in 3D space. After activating 3D, you might notice that the title goes somewhere. To fix this, connect the text layer to a feature or null layer. Select one of the base tracking points from the three available on the timeline. Hit the peak on the keyboard to bring up the position property. Then copy the position data by hitting Ctrl plus C. Next select the text layer and paste the position data by hitting Ctrl plus P. This aligns the position data of the feature layer with the text layer. You should see now the text or title position according to the 3D tracking point. Now we need to adjust the title's rotation and scale. First go to the timeline and lock the video, camera and null objects layer for safety. Then make sure the text layer is selected and go to its properties. If you can't find it, you can enable it from the window menu in the top bar. With the text layer selected, adjust the rotation, scale and position as needed from the properties panel. You can also make adjustments by moving the red, green and blue circles which represent the X, Y and Z axis respectively. If you prefer, you can change the view layout from single view to double view and adjust the text properties accordingly. Once you think the text adjustments are complete, play the time indicator to observe how the text animates such as zoom in. If it seems that the camera is not flying through the text as intended, you have the options to make further adjustments. Simply select the text and make slight changes to its position. Check to see if it now behaves as expected. If you want to give the text a 3D effect, you can do it in Blender or Photoshop. But for a simple 3D touch in After Effects, you can use the drop shadow effect. First, let's change the text style to black, then go to Effects and Presets tab and find the drop shadow effect. Apply this effect to the text layer on the timeline. With the text layer selected, go to the Effect Controls panel. Here you can adjust the distance, opacity, softness, and other parameters to give your text a simple 3D looks in just a few seconds. Once you are satisfied with the drop shadow adjustments, move the time indicator to see how it looks when zooming in. The title can appear rush and unrealistic when it is close to the camera due to the lack of motion blur. To achieve a more natural look, apply motion blur to the title. Simply enable the motion blur icon for the text layer to add this effect. You instantly see the effect on the monitor, which works well for the camera fly through text animation. This kind of text animation is perfect for cinematic video intros.
If you wanna enhance it further, you can mark the text precisely at the zooming position and add a video transition. You can find a tutorial on this in the link in the description of this video. Once again, if you wanna purchase Mocker Pro at a discounted rate, follow the link in the description as well. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on the updated Mocker Pro 2024 3D tracking feature. More Mocker Pro tutorials are coming soon, so I hope to see you there.